It is a pure miracle that curiosity survives for education. Recently, I have been down and I hate complaining as a student, but it's to a point that I do not want to study. And I have a brain with curiosity that is almost dying out. Today, I'm going to tell you a story of how I went from cramming a test to a student who uses Remno to reignite the curiosity fire. It is a new note-taking app that combines quizzes, active recall, and role researches by digressional linking and with space repetition in it. Rugify to the max for students' use. I will amaze you with the evidence-based studying techniques and algorithms in this app. Meta cognition, active recall, space repetition, and interleaving. Wow. Those are timestamps on the side, so feel free to skip around to the part that interests you the most. So college is where all this thing began. I love taking notes and doing research projects, but when it comes to passing a test, taking pretty notes was way too time consuming. With this amount of information overload from school, especially the industry, I slowly turned into a student who was only rewarded for throwing up all the information that I've memorized for the test. Everything seems to go smoothly, but curiosity seems to be withering out in the background. Not until first time failing a test, this is what it feels like. <laughs> I could not rebound and gain my curiosity again. This call, studying, actually did not grant me to learn. I needed to do something about this failure, so it is time to redefine failure. It is an opportunity to gain some post-traumatic growth. I realized that the first two years of dental school is very different from this third year's first semester, where it is all clinical application cases. I took the old process of studying onto third year, but something was missing. I realized that I just need to try something new. There are just so many options for the note-taking app, few that can revolutionize your workflow. But I think I found one. I bumped into Remnote in the vast ocean of the internet. Okay, my eyes is just dropping out of my socket when I saw it was huh? for free. So let's dive into this world of wonder and see how this app works. <laughs> Features. Overview. And so when you first enter Remnote, on the right there is a blank document, and on the left there is a sidebar with the queue, search, all your documents, and access to tutorials. From your documents list, you can pin and access them on the shortcut from the sidebar. With this document open on the right, and you can start typing right away. Every note, document, or bullet point you type in is called a rem. I know it sounds kind of weird, but just bear with me. They've designed a really fancy vocabulary system for this app right here. After typing your smart notes in bullet points, you can literally just start organizing your notes in rem notes. They call it the parent, children, and descendants of the sun. So your top level rem will be your major. For example, me, dentistry. And then the parents would be the, all the subjects within your major. For example, endodontics, implantology, orthodontic. And then under those subjects is your child. The lectures are the child. So in biology, they can be structures of the cell, prokaryotes, eukaryotes, a hierarchical organization. Like top level one, and then you organize it, break it down like a family tree. To bring up all the functions that the app can offer, press on the forward slash button on your keyboard. It brings up a humongous list of functions without memorizing all those shortcuts. So the first level of RemNote is typing bullet points and understanding the organization. You think after I realize all those things, I will be a blast on studying? Of course not. There is a learning curve to everything. And now we're going to level up to making linkings and connections using meta connection strategies that Remnote is a tool of metacognition. So what is metacognition, you may ask? A very good question, my friend. It is knowing about knowing and thinking about thinking. And oh gosh, that's some Dr. Seuss shit right there. In non-alien and nerdy form language, it is a skill that you can build and practice to self-observe your progress through learning. So how does it make the brain ability to do this? Some of the features are linking, alias, tagging, and portal. Now it's time to, to synthesize and build up this knowledge base. 
So first, linking and referencing feature. The curiosity of connections and association is greatly satisfied with this one. So to bring up the link searching function, you press the double bracket key on your keyboard. I'll use my endodontic lectures as an example and walk you guys through it. For those who don't know, endodontics means study inside of the tooth. When I'm studying the lecture on the treatment process of endodontics, and the first step is diagnosis, which means that I need to find the main cause and problem of the pain of this teeth. I need to take an x-ray, and I need to refer to the anatomy of the teeth. So I tag endodontic anatomy to the first step. When I forget or I'm confused about what anatomy features should I pay attention? I can click on this page and it brings me to this page of notes that is about endodontic anatomy. So just exactly how smart Remno is. With the linking function, even if you don't remember what topics and knowledge exist within your database, highlight any text in Remnote and you hover your cursor over it. Remnote searches up this keyword across our database and make possible connections just like how we learn in our brain. Knowledge builds on top of each other when we make associations. Next is tags. It is, sounds like hashtags from Instagram, you're not wrong. You just press the hashtag button twice. You can bring up your existing tags or you can create new ones. You can group similar ideas together, not necessarily they share the same big topic or parent. For example, in the lecture, when teacher says, oh, this is a key concept and this will be an exam, you can tag this will be an exam or important beside this specific bullet point. And when reviewing session comes along, you can click on this tag and see all the important things that the teacher has mentioned and next is alias feature well this is the pro version but i really like this feature so i'm gonna introduce it to you guys here too you can customize linked page's name into a shorter version or a different variation for example you can make long scientific words into shorter versions when you reference them for non-steroidal inflammatory drugs you can make it into NSAID which is the abbreviation and this also works in when you're studying languages the conjugation of a verb in Spanish has like 10,000 different forms you can make the document title the infinite form of the verb all the aliases below as the conjugation of the infinitive form. And then it is the portal function. Portal legitimately just means that you can put things into one portal hole and it appears in the other side. You can let the same text exist in different locations within the database. So with this example, I'm sure you guys will understand. So if I'm studying biology and the definition and structure of DNA applies to many aspects, it can exist in the introduction to genetics chapter, or it can also exist in differences of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And then now is when the portal function comes in handy. I can use the search bar to bring up the definition and structure of the DNA and embed it into this lecture because it will remind me what's the structure of DNA and RNA because they differ in those two types of cells. And then lastly, it's the graph view. Without the referencing, linking, and tagging you've done below, if you want to see the whole connection picture of your knowledge base, you can type slash graph in your menu function. It brings up a photo of how those graphs link together. I'll insert a clip from another YouTube video because I'm a bit confused about this graph view because it is a plugin. Remnote does not have this function built into it like Rome. So I need to find a way to download this plugin of knowledge graphs, which I did not. As I mentioned before, dental school is divided into two parts, basic science and clinical learning. Understanding and pure memorization really only works in the basic science part. When I was cramming, I was literally not engaging with any of those contents. I was just trying to make them stick in my brain. And the only question that I can ask for my curiosity skills, will that be an exam? And of course, that is not curiosity. But in the third year, using the same method is like a waste of time. I realize learning basic science and clinical cases are completely two different things. Even if you know the textbooks in and out, even in the same field of dentistry, I can know everything, but I don't know how to diagnose a case. Taking notes around for each chapter for me takes around two hours per lecture. I just make connections as I take notes. It makes this note taking process a lot more active. All those dentistry concept is very, very dry when it's just on notes and papers. The fun part only comes when I get to apply. Rem Notes also offers this. It is the active recall function. So what is active recall again? It is known as testing yourself. So here's a quote from the book called Make It Stick. 
the science of learning. One of the most striking research findings is the power of active retrieval. The more effortful the retrieval, the stronger the benefit is. Your brain is like a muscle. You train it and it gets stronger. I recommend you guys all read this book because it literally changed and shaped my way of learning. So there are four types of flashcards in RemNote. The first one is simply just a term and a definition. You type two colons between the term and the definition. So the front part of the flashcard is the term and then the back part is the definition. And then if your information for the definition is very long, this makes the second type of flashcard, which is the multi-line flashcard. You can type three colons. It shows you all of the bullet points and on the back of the flashcard. And then the front part is the term, same as before. Create. And if you want to make sure this flashcard is created properly, when you study and take notes, you can hover down to the left corner of the document to preview the flashcard that you have created. And then the next type of flashcard is fill in the blank, which RemNote calls them close. I have no idea why, but type the squiggly bracket and then closed off the fill in the blank with the closed squiggly bracket. And this word will be underlined. And when this flashcard appears, the answer will be this underlined term. For this type of flashcard, you can cover up any word on an image. And each box is a labeling type flashcard. It is very, very useful for anatomy. This flashcard function legitly makes RemNote the best thing ever because it makes learning like a video game, studying so personalized and not into like tiny little boxes. Oh yes, daddy! It's just so stiff with such a freeing personality, you know? So after your flashcard is created, how often are you supposed to study? It is called space repetition. And yes, REM don't even have this algorithm built into it. Space repetition means that you space out the frequency of testing yourself. It interrupts your Ebbinghaus memory forgetting curve. It requires some forgetting at the first, and then next time when you come back to study the subject, you will put in more effort to record, and therefore this strengthens the memory. At the beginning, you review it every single day, and then later on, you review it every single week. By the time you take your exams, you will have all the concepts memorized, and there's no cramming required. But to be honest, the truth is, uh, who the hell sticks to the schedule like this? So when you start studying, you press on the Q in the sidebar. This brings up all your flashcards in your knowledge base. Or if you want to study one subject, you can click on the three dots on the right hand corner and say study cues within this REM document. During the studying session, you can tell RemNote how well you recall those concepts based on the emoji. The sad face means you can't recall it. The flat face means that you can like some more recall it. The happy face that you mean you got it. And then the spaced repetition algorithm will somehow determine how many times this concept will appear on your screen and it's planned for you that is the best thing ever and for the edit later function so whenever you come across a flashcard that you want to edit add a picture or add a connection to it you can click on the edit later button and the same thing also works in your phone because if we're on the go studying on the bus or the toilet when you are doing a productive poo we don't want to disrupt our workflow so after you finish your studying session we can go to the sidebar and click on edit later with all of your flashcard that you have tagged edit later here and you can batch all your edit at once. So the next function that is built into RemNote is interleaving. Interleaving pretty much just means that when I study I want to switch between subjects and not only solely study on one subject for like 8 to 10 hours. When I become licensed dentist, I will need to apply all those 5 years of studying and knowledge to a patient. That is the real life situation. So interleaving and variability in testing yourself is closest to how human apply knowledge in real life. As you make more links, connections, and tags in your RemNote database, this interleaving algorithm becomes better. That's what the RemNote developers said. I really trust them. With my experience of two weeks of dating this RemNote app, I will share you some pros and con tips to make your learning experience with this app easier. Trying something new really gives me the dopamine hit of novelty. So first, with the pros of my experiences. The first is the customization of RemNote. You can literally make anything you want with all those versatility and functions within RemNote to suit your own study and working habits. Second one is that it makes me fun and excited to use this 
app because it feels like I'm building and growing a tree on my own with making those connections and thoughts. Thirdly, by creating this workflow system that is custom made to my needs, it is a really good safety net for me to fall back on when I'm on my lazy days or when I don't want to do work at all. Because according to James Clear, we don't rise to the levels of our goals, we fall to the levels of our systems. The fourth one is the ease to create an account in Remnote. And after you create an account, our notes are directly synced into Remnote server. And so some of the cons is that First, the learning curve and terminology of this app is very, very complicated. Since it has so much customizability, it really makes it hard to get hands-on of this app really fast. And the second one is that this app is currently in the, its developing phase and there's a lot of plugins that I don't know how to install. I really want to give you guys some words on curiosity. I know that the education system is kind of messed up and... <laughs> It is very overpriced for getting a degree. I don't even know how people get their masters and professions. I'm already suffering in my bachelor's degree. Huh. But the secret to learning is to keep your curiosity like a kid, to ask questions. Surprisingly, kids ask around 129 questions in an hour. That's how curious kids are. Just make curiosity guide your learning progress. It looks kind of messy and time-wasting, but that is how we learn. The process is not as glorious and straight line as it seems. I have no special talent, but I am just passionately curious about the world around me. If you want to learn more about productivity and other apps, check out those two videos on GTD in Notion and how I use Rome research to take book notes. Thank you all for watching and keep your curiosity going. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!